So my mom gave me this VCR she had lying around as an early birthday present, and I decided to try watching some of my favorite movies from when I was a kid, and then I thought, eh, well, it might be fun to make a video out of this. So let's start with one of my childhood favorites, The Land Before Time. When I was a kid, I was, and admittedly still am, really into dinosaurs. In fact, I legitimately considered studying paleontology while I was in university, but it's been a long, long time since I've watched any of these movies. Probably at least 15 years, so I wanted to see how they held up. I remember the fifth one being my favorite of the Land Before Time movies we had, but it wouldn't be right to start from there, so let's take a look at the beginning. And, uh, spoiler warning for this 1980s children's movie. One of the things that jumped out to me about this movie upon rewatching was just how slow the movie is, but I don't mean this in a bad way. The Land Before Time takes its time opening up, with an introduction showing us the world of dinosaurs that's a lot longer than I anticipated for a children's movie. It's cute that we get to see all of our main characters hatch as the movie begins, which really makes this feel like the beginning of the adventure, and if you know anything about The Land Before Time, you'll know that there's a million of these movies, so to see the very beginning of everything is pretty cool in hindsight. Now this may just be because my memory is filled with the later movies in this series, or perhaps my VHS is just a little old and starting to fail, but the original Land Before Time seems to be really brown and gritty. The colors used throughout the movie feel faded and dark. I can't tell if it's just the VHS, or if the artists were trying to go for a slightly more realistic look to their cartoon about talking dinosaurs, but I think I remember having similar thoughts as a kid too. If you take a look at one of the later movies side by side, you can see what I mean. The newer films tend to be filled with more bright colors when compared to the original. It's not a bad thing, it's just an interesting choice for a children's movie if it's not just the age of my VHS. The main character is of course Littlefoot, a brachiosaurus living with his mother and grandparents, and soon enough we get introduced to Sarah the Triceratops. Littlefoot and Sarah have a bit of a rivalry going on throughout the rest of the movie. This actually caught me by surprise since I remembered their dynamic from most of the other movies I watched as a kid where they're pretty good friends, so to see them starting off with this sort of feud was really interesting. These two are definitely the film's most central characters, and each of them kind of has an attitude. While Sarah is definitely the more easily agitated, Littlefoot gets real cranky about all sorts of stuff throughout the movie too. Littlefoot's mother tells him about a place she has only ever heard about called the Great Valley and tells him that in order to get there, they must travel for a long time, each day following the sun until they reach a rock that looks like a long neck and mountains that are burning. The movie has its own vernacular for the names of dinosaurs as well as things like mountains or the sun and moon. Long necks, of course, refer to any kind of sauropod, three horns are triceratops, sharp teeth are carnivorous dinosaurs, you get the idea. It's a cute touch that I really appreciate as an adult, but I remember being in kindergarten and my teacher would get upset when teaching us about the dinosaurs because we all could not stop calling any sauropod a long neck. I distinctly remember feeling like there was no other possible name you could call a dinosaur with a long neck. One night, Sarah and Littlefoot are playing in a bubbling mud pit when all of a sudden a sharp tooth attacks. They try and run away and they end up hiding in a thorn bush. For whatever reason, this was one of those scenes that really struck some mental nerve in my head as I was all of a sudden filled with memories of watching this scene as a kid when I saw it again. Thankfully, Littlefoot's mother comes to the rescue and saves Sarah and Littlefoot from the sharp tooth, but an earthquake, or earth shake, as the dinosaurs call it, ends up splitting up all sorts of dinosaur families and tragically kills Littlefoot's mother. This is only like 20 minutes in, and wow! It really hit me. I remember crying at this part as a kid and damn, if I didn't shed a tear this time watching it again, it's just such a heartbreaking scene. From here, Littlefoot is on his own, but as the movie goes along, he ends up getting together with Sarah, Ducky, Petrie, and Spike as they all make their way to the Great Valley. From here, the movie kind of meanders a lot. Sarah isn't so keen on following Littlefoot and breaks off from the main group a couple of times. This happens to pretty much every character throughout the film at one point or another, where they get separated from everyone else and end up having their own really small arc. 
Each of the characters is fun and charming in their own way. Petrie is a pterodactyl that doesn't know how to fly, Spike is a silly mute glutton, and Ducky is just the most adorable creature to ever grace this earth. Now don't step on a crack or you'll fall and break your back. <laughs> After watching the movie and looking into some of the actors, I discovered that the actress who plays her, Judith Barcy, was sadly a victim of child abuse and she and her mother were tragically murdered by her father shortly after this movie was made. It's an absolutely terrible thing to have happened and it made me sick to my stomach to discover this. Ducky's relationship with Petrie is probably my favorite thing about this movie. They're both introduced around the same time and they're both about the same size. I just love all of the little interactions they have with each other throughout the film, and even though Spike and Ducky end up being the adopted siblings together, you really get the sense that she and Petrie are the two best pals in the group. The climax of the movie is where the gang tries to take out the shark tooth that has been harassing them for the entire movie. It's kind of wild to think about a bunch of children killing a giant ferocious beast, but it works pretty well. Petrie learns how to fly while trying to escape from the sharp tooth and the gang makes it out okay and gets reunited with their families in the Great Valley. But I'd really be remiss if I didn't talk about the amazing score of the movie. The orchestrated soundtrack to The Land Before Time is able to capture a wide range of emotions ranging from a playful and fun adventure to rip your heart out levels of sadness. What's crazy too is that The Land Before Time was produced by George Lucas and Steven Spielberg while being directed by Don Bluth. Don Bluth was responsible for a lot of animated cartoons that came out during the 80s and 90s, and if you want to learn more about his career, I highly recommend this video by Saberspark. Looking back on this movie as an adult, I think it holds up pretty well. You might not enjoy it if you didn't watch it as a kid, but as far as kids movies go, it's definitely not bad. I asked my parents what they thought about it when they got it for me way back when, and they said that they really liked it compared to some of the other junk I would make them watch with me. I'd say if you've got a kid who's into dinosaurs or you really like vintage hand-drawn American animation, definitely check it out. I'm Boffner and thanks for watching this fun offshoot of my other videos. If you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. I assume this video will probably be one of my least popular just because it's so different from my usual content, but if there's one person out there that wants another episode, I'll definitely think about making one since it was fun to look back on this memory from my childhood and they don't take that much time to make. See ya! I didn't even get to show you all my dinosaur stuff. We got the Mammoth Book of Dinosaurs, New Dinos, which is a bit outdated now, Know-It-All Dinosaurs, Monopoly Dinosaurs, How to Draw Dinosaurs, The Big Book of Dinosaurs, Dinosaurs, The Board Game.